right, we're going to talk about identifying slopes. So we're going to kind of get this parallel and perpendicular line kind of thing. First thing, and hopefully this won't be too long, first of all, your formula for your slope is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is your rise over your run. It's also known as change in y over change in run. Okay, this is how your y is changing. That's how your x is changing. So let's look at first what our slopes look like. If we notice we're going from left to right and it's going upwards, like up a mountain, we're going to have a positive slope. Okay, so this is positive. If we're going from left to right and we're going down the mountain or down the hill, we're going to have a negative slope. This has all been taught before several times in seventh grade. When we have a straight horizontal line here, okay, we are going to end up with a zero slope. And your vertical line, completely vertical, is going to be your undefined. Now, very, very small. We're going to go ahead and write a couple things in the top corner of these notes up here. I want to introduce you to what we call VUX and HOI. So very tiny, I want you to write V, U, X, just like this. What VUX stands for is vertical. V is for vertical. So it would be a vertical line, just like this one right here. U stands for undefined, so you have an undefined slope. And the X tells you that your equation is simply going to be X equals a number. So you're not going to have this Y equals NX plus B. You're just going to have X equals wherever that line crosses the X axis. Here it's at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the equation of this would be X equals 5 because X is always going to equal 5. The other one we want to look at is HOI. H-O-Y, and I know in Spanish it's called hoy, meaning today, but we need to pronounce it in math as hoy as our, um, so we can understand exactly what everything's standing for. H is now going to stand for horizontal. This means we have a horizontal line right here. The O is actually going to represent a zero for zero slope. So we have a zero slope, just like it says down here. And in that y, just like over here, it's going to mean that you're going to have an equation that says y equals a number. And we come over here, we see that y is at positive 5. It crosses the y-axis at positive 5, so the equation right here would be y equals 5. That is it. All right, just want those introduced to you. So here are the three different forms that we have for our, equa our linear equations. We have slope-intercept form, we have point-slope form, and we have standard form. We're going to take a look. Uh, we're going to find the slope of each of these um, in these equations down here. Some of them we do have to solve before we can uh, before we can figure it out. If we look at your slope-intercept form, see how A matches your slope-intercept. We have right here exactly where your slope is going to be located. So your slope is simply located in front of x. So this is a really easy one, just right there. So your slope, m, just simply equals 5. Why can't they all be that easy, right? If we take a look at b, we're in slope-intercept form right here, where y equals y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. Where we'll talk more about points, okay? So these are going to be coordinates of points that you're given, and here, Right there, just as easy as your slope-intercept form. It's very easy to find your slope. It's going to be right in front of those parentheses there. So your slope here is just going to be equal to 2. Now, when you get to the standard form, notice how we don't have anything on here that says slope. We are going to have to actually solve for y like we did in previous notes, where we have to isolate y, turn it into your slope-intercept form so we can figure out where our slope or what our slope is. So again, to do this, we need to first subtract that 9x from both sides. Remember that I always like to put it off to the side over here so we don't get it mistaken with that 11. These cancel, bring down that 4y equals, I'm now going to move that negative 9x in front, and then we have a plus 11 because it's positive. We are not done because we still have that 4 in front of y. So we need to divide everything by 4, so these 4's cancel out, we have y equals a negative 9 over 4, we can't simplify that, 
So we have negative 9 over 4x plus, and again, we can't simplify this either, so we'll just leave it as 11 over 4. Now we are in y equals mx plus b, this right here. So we can see here, we have to solve in this case, but m, your slope, is going to equal negative 9 over 4. So once you, if you're in standard form, you have to solve first, okay? We're going to use our slope formula, and we're going to the um, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, to solve, to find the slope with two given points. First, let's go ahead and label x1, y1, x2, y2, because this is in our formula. Okay, going back all the way up here. Okay. So we're going to take x2, say that m equals x2, 8, minus x, or sorry, y2, 8, minus y1, minus 2, over x2, 4, minus x1, which is a negative 6. We need minus a negative 6. When we solve this out, we're going to find 8 minus 2 is 6. 4 minus a negative 6 turns into a 4 plus 6, giving us 10. We always want to make sure that we can, if we can simplify these fractions, we simplify them. 6 and 10 could both be divided by 2, giving us 3 fifths as our slope. Take a look at B. We have x1, y1, x2, y2. Let's go ahead and fill in our formula. We have y2, negative 3 minus y1, negative 3. So three, negative 3 minus negative 3. On the bottom, we have x1, negative 1, minus, I'm sorry, x2, negative 1, x1, minus 2. A negative 3 minus a negative 3 is just like saying negative 3. This can turn into a plus. Plus 3, we're going to end up with 0. Plug in the calculator if you doubt it. Negative 1 minus 2 more is going to give us a negative 3. If you plug in 0 divided by negative 3 into your calculator, your calculator is going to pop up 0. This is a 0 slope. And we'll talk about how to write those equations later. The last one here, uh, that was actually the end of my lunch. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back and finish later. Okay, so this last one, I know I, the page probably brightened up a little bit. Um, this last one, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. We've got x1, y1, x2, y2. So we set up our slope. Our formula calls for y2, 6, minus y1, negative 3, and then x2, 2, minus x1, 2. We do our 6 minus negative 3. Remember, that becomes 6 plus 3. We end up with 9 on top. Well, 2 minus 2 is going to give you 0. Well, when you put in your calculator, are going to tell you undef, which means undefined. So here we have an undefined slope. So let's take a look at what's going on with parallel and perpendicular slopes. Okay, this is the important part to see here. When it comes to parallel and perpendicular lines, there are two things that you need to remember. Parallel lines have slopes that are the same. Slopes that are the same. Pause it and get it written down if you need to. Uh, they never intersect, which means a rise over run has to be exactly the same or they will intersect at some point. Now your perpendicular lines, this is where we're going to have some words come in here. They are going to have slopes that are Okay, make sure you have that written down because these next two words are going to be very important. Slopes that are what we call opposite reciprocals. Two words, opposite reciprocal. What this means is opposite means change the sign. Positive to negative, negative to positive. Reciprocal, we need to remember right here, flip the fraction. Flip the fraction, all right? Numerator to denominator, denominator to numerator. So we're going to practice finding the parallel and perpendicular slopes of these following problems. So the first one here, we, um, we have these two points. So we don't have a slope yet, so we're just going to use, do exactly what we just did, the last three problems on the other page. We're going to have x1, y1, x2, y2. We're going to go ahead and 
plug this into our formula. We have y2, which is going to be 5, minus y1, 4, over x2, 7, minus x1, 1. We do this math, 5 minus 4 is going to give us 1. 7 minus 1 will give us 6. 6. So this slope that we just came up with, in order for us to find a slope that's parallel, or a line that's parallel, we're going to use this exact same slope. So your parallel slope is just 1, 6. Your answer to the slope is what the parallel slope will be. Okay, so once you solve it, there's your parallel slope. Now your opposite reciprocal, what's going to happen here, is you're going to take that 1 and 6, and you're going to switch them. And you're also going to go opposite. So parallel was positive, so now we're going negative. Now we know that anything over 1 is itself. So this becomes just a negative 6. Okay? So these are opposite signs, and we flipped the fraction, as you can see right here. Opposite sign, flip the fraction, anything over 1, we turn into that whole number. Let's take a look at number two. Here, we're given the slope, because we have y equals mx plus b. m, that's the slope. Okay, so m is going to be three. Parallel, we use the exact same slope. Easy enough. I asked for the parallel slope. It's exact same, three. Now, with your perpendicular slope, we need to remember that this three is actually three over one. So we have to change the sign. Opposite, meaning change the sign. So we go from positive to negative. Reciprocal means flip these. It means one goes on top, the three goes on bottom. Negative one third. Okay, go back and watch it again if you need to. We got two more though. Number three is giving us in point slope form. Point slope meaning we have our slope right here. It's y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. So the m right here, this is going to be our straight up slope. Don't have to do anything to, to solve it. We just find it. So our parallel slope is exactly the same. Parallel, exactly the same. All right? Your perpendicular, again, we went from po we were at positive, so we need to change this to negative. And we need to remember a whole number is 7 over 1 is a fraction. So just like in the last one, we're going to flip that fraction. Okay? Almost sounds like a game show. Flip that fraction. So the 1 is going to go up to the top, and the 7 is going to go to the bottom, and there's our perpendicular slope. Opposite reciprocal. Opposite sign, flip that fraction. With number four, what we need to do first is, well, we don't have y by itself. We need y by itself. Okay, so we can find our um, so we can find our slope. So here we're gonna go ahead and subtract that four x from both sides. We wind up with a negative three y on the left. I'm gonna bring that negative four x to the front here, plus the seventeen. Now we need to divide everything by what's in front of y, like we've discussed. So we have y equals, remember we have a negative 4 over a negative 3. Those are going to cancel and give us a positive 4 thirds. Bring our x down. And we'll just leave this as, oh, that should be a minus, sorry, because we have plus, but then we have this minus right here. So this would be minus 17 over 3. And all we need to focus on is where m is, that 4 thirds. So m is 4 thirds, parallel, the exact same slope, just copy it down. Same line, same, well, it was not the same line, but they're going to be parallel, they never intersect, they're going to have the same slope. Here we have a positive, so we need to do opposite, change the sign to negative. Reciprocal, we need to flip that fraction, 3 on top and four on bottom. So there are your examples for slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines.